Um, I am going to record the session just so that we can actually also provide it to those who could not attend this afternoon. And you can also then go back um, and um, have a look um, at it. So um, my name is Celia Yoran. I'm the chief judge. It's been, um, it's, it's, I think it's about the fourth year that I am the chief judge. Uh, there's still a few more people that's just coming in. Let me just let them in. Um, and this afternoon's session is to run you through as to what is expected in terms of the next round um, so that you can have an idea as to how to prepare um, what we are going to do and what we are expecting of you. So um, let me just work out how I get my, my next page because it doesn't want to. There we are. Um, OK, so in terms of the agenda for this afternoon, um, Sorry, just someone else. Uh, there, we're going to run through a bit of a quick overview. I'm going to talk to you about the virtual judging process. Uh, we're going to look at some of the logistics, the timing and the process. Uh, just, just give you a, a brief understanding as to what the judges uh, will be doing. Um, a bit of an, uh, an explanation as to my role as the chief judge. We'll work through your presentation because in the end, it is here to, we are here to talk about um, your presentation. Um, and so if you're not on mute yet, can I just suggest that you do mute, um, mute yourself. So, um, and then I'll provide you with some uh, contact uh, information. So in terms of, uh, taking just a moment, um, I'm glad to see that people are very excited and they're very happy to be listed. Congratulations. It's, um, it's been a year that certainly is for us is a year where we will want to celebrate the fact that it's 30 years in a, in a I think, in a, a state where innovation is not always celebrated as easily as, say, resources and mining. So, um, you've done really well on, on being selected as a finalist. And I would like to say thank you for taking the time to provide us with excellent um, entries. It made it really hard to actually determine who the finalists were. But the good thing about that is now that you're finalists, you start with a clean slate. So basically the previous scores are not carried over and whatever you do from here on in um, will be judged um, as, a, as the next step in the process. So just be mindful in general that there are quite a bit of logistics involved in setting up the judging. Um, and so I've seen that quite a number of you have already booked your Calendly spot. So when we notified you that you were a, um, a finalist, we also provided you with a link to book um, a time slot because we've allocated some time slots. We cannot really move those time slots um, around because there's, there's, you know, um, all of the finalists, there's all of the judges, there's the moderators, there's myself, um, and we're actually running two sessions at the same time. So it is quite a process. So if you can make sure that you book your times that we know when uh, that everybody is booked, it would really be appreciated. If your link has expired, because I've seen that um, has happened, just uh, send a note through to Petra. Um, and uh, she'll resend it to you. So I'm quickly going to touch on the I Awards and the digital disruptors. So last year when we were doing these virtual, you know, uh, judging and ceremonies, it was a bit uncertain what was going to happen with the I Awards and digital disruptors. And even um, at the moment, um, it seems uh, I saw an email this morning from the I Awards chief judge. They have got in Melbourne some new... COVID uh, measures in place. What will happen with the I Awards is that they will, those who become uh, winners and merit award um, uh, winners will go through to the I Awards. They will actually run a virtual presentation, very similar to what we are doing um, in our next round. Um, a picture does, a seem, does seem to be booked to be going ahead, but not sure exactly how that's going to happen and, and, and how it will go ahead. But it's very good. 
So just as a, as a note of warning, when you do become a winner and a merit award winner for the I awards, um, they may actually expect us to send through a short video of overview. Um, so we will work with you on, on that. Um, the digital disruptors didn't actually go through last year, um, but it, they have told me that they are going ahead, which again is a, is a really good opportunity for um, West Australian innovation to go through. So that should typically happen uh, later in the year. And the other one that I haven't put on there, but it's not relevant for this, is the PSC um, Entrepreneur Awards, which will also then happen in November. Um, so just to take you through a high level timeline. So we finished with April, we've done the judging and you've now been selected. So the round uh, two judging is set in that period between one and 12 June. Uh, we've also opened the honorary awards. So in the honorary awards, we do look at the PSC Entrepreneur of the Year. We look at the Achiever, uh, Achiever of the Year and we're also looking at the Tech Company of the Year. So if you um, have any good nominations, any person, any companies that you would want to nominate, please watch out. If you want us to send you more information, please let me know as well. So in this process, now that you've become a finalist as well, there's quite a bit of work that um, happens behind the scenes. Um, and Petra will be in touch with you to, um, we're going to take some videos um, of all of the finalists, um, and it may be interviews, it may be taking some of your information. Um, if we need some more information from you, or we need you to uh, come and, and work with us to prepare the, the video, uh, we, will, we will be in touch because we on the plan is that on the 23rd of July, so put that in your um, calendar so long, we will run a digital conference. And at the digital conference, we will actually run these videos of all the finalists and we will have the plan touch wood and keep everything crossed is that we will have uh, a cocktail presentation on the 23rd or the 22nd of July. Um, we will confirm those dates. Uh, it, it is always uh, at the moment, you know, in, in the times that we live, it's always one of those things that are hanging a bit of a balance, um, but we will keep you posted. Um, and then, as I said, the I awards are picked, uh, the Digital Disruptors PSC awards will happen later um, in the year. So just with respect to the virtual uh, judging, so we've got the, the time scheduled. Uh, there are the slots. Uh, we will do the judging via Zoom. Um, and if you haven't done so, and I can't stress it enough, please uh, book it. Um, we will actually run our judging into parallel streams. Uh, so um, it does take a bit of uh, logistics around doing it. Um, because we run judging panels, um, we can actually run two sessions. Um, I would always recommend that you actually, in your preparation, keep a, keep a virtual copy of your presentation. So, um, because if something happens that we can actually go back and have a look at that. Um, that is just, you don't have to do it, but it is always a, a, a wise thing to do. So with the Zoom, there is the link, obviously, there is the booking and the, the Zoom link is in the Calendly booking. Um, we do run those two sessions concurrently, and thus we actually have the two moderators who will similarly to this, someone will keep you waiting in the virtual meeting room. And because we run these sessions, they will also then let you in and um, exit you out of the room. Um, please make sure that you actually join the Zoom meeting early. Uh, sometimes when the meetings run faster or the judges come back from their um, their sessions earlier and you are all there, we can also start earlier. Um, so if you are there 10 to 15 minutes before that allocated time, uh, that is very good. Um, the moderator will let you into the room and they will also then work on the share screen function to make sure that you can present and share your screen. Um, I would also suggest that you, if, if Zoom isn't your forte, please practice it a bit before the time. I think it helps with, you know, it's a, maybe it's, it's a, some people find it nervous to present to strangers. So um, if you do feel nervous, practice these things where you actually remove um, 
the things that can, um, you know, can, can cause some, some extra nervousness. Um, we will request permission to record the meeting. Uh, we could also use that it's good that if um, we need to get some snippets uh, for the, the pitch videos, uh, that we can actually um, access those. So if in a session that there are particular points where you have commercially sensitive or intellectual property know-how, which you don't want to share, feel free to let us know and we can actually stop the recording at that moment um, and just bring it back on. So we, we can work with you because we are, are mindful that people do not want to share their know-how or their commercially sensitive information. Just um, as another note, all of our judges do have to sign a confidentiality agreement. They all, we work through quite a strict uh, conflict of interest process. And um, hi, Zach. Welcome. Um, and we, um, so we, we treat people, you know, your confidential information um, as confidential um, as such. So in terms of the presentation timing, um, you will basically have when you, once you let into the room, um, the lead judge will give you a bit of an introduction. You'll get time to get your share screen sorted out. So don't take more than five minutes for that. Um, and then the, the, in total, you have 30 minutes that you have for your session. Um, the, the recommendation is that you use 15 minutes for your presentation and you use 15 minutes for questions and answers from the judges. Um, and then you will exit the meeting room, the judges will do their judging, they'll have a break, and then we go on to the next session. If you are late, you're going to eat into your, your allocated time slot. We can't move these things around. Um, it's the same with the judges. If a judge can't be there, they cannot part judge um, in a category, they've got to judge all of um, all of the entries. So uh, please make sure that you are on time. The recommendation always is to stick to the proposed time. Um, also make sure that you yeah awesome. Okay. Also make sure that you um, that in terms of your timing, so the 15 minutes presentation, if you can do 15 minutes or 14 minutes of presentation, the best feedback that anyone can ever get, and I've seen this in all of the four years that I've done this, is in those 15 minutes when the judges come and give their feedback, or they ask, they don't give feedback, they ask their questions. Um, and I've I have seen it in various, various sessions where judges come and ask the question and you can see it's almost like a light bulb moment where people go out and they go, oh, you didn't think about this. Um, and so really, because also remember that the judges will be scoring. And if you don't allow them time to clarify, they will score on what you've presented. The Typically, the presentations and the entries that do well are the ones where there's there's a lot of discipline around making sure that your present presentation is clear and that presentation fits in that 15 minutes. Um, just move to the next slide. So for those of you who joined late, um, we are recording the meeting. Um, we will also be making a link of the presentation um, or the recording and uh, available as well as provide you with a copy of the presentation. So the judges. Um, you need to kind of, I, I would suggest practices um, and practices with, you know, in this, I can't see because I've put you up on my other screen, so I can't actually see you. So I'm talking to myself effectively here. Um, and that's a bit what you have to, to practice is the judges are focused on scoring your presentation against the evaluation criteria. They map what you say. So they're listening, say watching. Um, and they match it against, we provide them with a score sheet. And typically what, the, what we do provide uh, the judges with is we provide them with an old fashioned paper sheet where um, the criteria is on the left-hand side and each of the entries are linked next to each other. Um, the judges then go and when they listen to your presentation and they've asked you the questions, they will actually score you. And this is the matrix that they use. So always think about five as that middle ground. You've met the criteria, you've told them, what they need to know, but you need to go beyond them. You need to tell them 
the information in a superior way or you need to tell them in, in how, you know, it's this is an excellence award. So you really have to think about how you demonstrate excellence. Um, but basically what the judges will then end up doing is they will go and score. So say you get a seven the next in one of the criteria and the next job entry come in and they go, well, maybe it's actually not a seven, it's a six because this entry is doing better. By having that sheet there, the, the judges are able to benchmark against each other. So if the judges are not looking at you, do not think that you're not meeting the mark. Do not take anything from it. The judges are doing what they're meant to be doing. They are scoring you against the criteria. We have a proper process. It's quite a, a diligent process. So you really just have to be able to present um, and tell your story. And you will see that the judges have listened because once it comes to the questions and answers, they will ask you to go back to a, to a slide or they will ask you questions. Um, so just in terms of my role, you would typically not physically see me because I will have my camera off. Um, I will I typically sit in and kind of observe, observe between all of the sessions. Um, I work with the judges and the lead judges specifically around any questions that come up. Um, we have an introduction and a deliberations um, session. So we look at those. Um, and with the lead judges, then we look at the final review of the winners and the merit award winners. So, um, so really, I will be there, but you won't you won't be seeing me. So your presentation, because this is what it's all about. Um, you really need to be prepared, um, and don't leave your preparations to the end. If you're going to leave your preparations to the end, that fifteen minutes is fifteen minutes can be a very long time but it's also a very, very short time. Remember to take the judges on a journey. Um, you, you've seen by now who your um, competitors are in this process. You've seen all, I'm sure, you know, when we sometimes look at the competitors, we go, wow, how did I make it? Well, if you've all made it, you've all on a clean slate. Um, but you need to be able to, to convince the judges that you are the entry that they need to pick. So you have to capture their attention, show your passion, never, never shy away from um, bringing your passion, bringing your product, bringing your culture into the presentation. Think about how you stand out from the crowd, um, what makes you different, um, and make it easy enough for the judges to follow your presentation. So remember, the judges have a score sheet. They know what the criteria are. But if you if you if you talk a little bit about the problem, then you go to the solution, and then you go back to the problem, and then you go to the innovation. And there's it's a bit of a jumble. It actually makes it hard to try and keep track of what you what you do. You're talking. So the the presentations that typically do well is people that have a structure. The structure is easy to follow. And you actually use the clues that you've got. So you know you can you can um, you can, for instance, in your presentation, include some quotes on the back screen. If you in the question and answer section, you could probably run one of your videos in the background, uh, not necessarily having um, the the sound, but but you make it easy for the judges to capture them. So really be super mindful about your time. Allow for the questions and answers, because if you don't allow for that, this is what the judges will judge you on. Um, I say this every year, and I, I don't know how many people do it, um, but practice your presentation with mock judges. Sit down with someone and present and say, this is my score sheet. This is what I need to have been able to work out. Am I meeting it? Am I meeting the requirements? Um, make sure, and, and, it, and it came through, for instance, in some of the scoring, is that all the elements that you need to meet are set out um, in the category description. Make sure that you've ticked those things and you have, have got it sorted. Be concrete and specific. So use real examples of how you present value, of how, you, how your excellence is better than the other um, anyone else in, in who's presenting. So the other thing is that I think take the time to make sure that your title of your presentation is, is sharp and crisp. 
it must be that key concept that explains it. So the people can go and go, okay, that's why I remember it. Don't just pick your company name unless it is the concept. But even if that is the concept and it's not, um, it's not clear what it is, bring a tagline into it. Make sure that you address the criteria and order. We've actually set the criteria up because it is, we, it's got a structure and it's got a structure that we would like to look at. The judges, a lot of the judges have judged over many years. There are new judges. They are all going back to the criteria and what, um, what needs to happen. So as you can see, for instance, on, um, uh, on my presentation, I put some breadcrumbs at the bottom and you can see we're talking now about the presentation. Make use of breadcrumbs, make use of uh, clues so that the judges know what you're actually talking about. So the judges know that, for instance, if, if, if for some reason it's better for you to start with the innovation rather than start with, um, so I'm sorry, I just let someone in. If it's better for you to start with the innovation, that the judges know that you will be coming back um, and that that where you are in the process so they can see, hey, this will happen. Um, don't forget to highlight why your submission is unique and why you should be selected as the winner. Don't be shy about saying, hey, um, yeah, oh, sorry. So breadcrumbs are the stage indicators. So if you see at the bottom, there are these little arrows that say introduction, judging, logistics, timing, the judges, chief judge, your presentation. Those are breadcrumbs. Um, so Gemma, if that explains that, and Barclay, thank you. Um, so you can use little indicators for that. It's almost like the roadmaps to your presentation. You don't have to use these breadcrumbs, um, but find a way that you make sure that your judges know where you are. So also don't forget to link your presentation back to the category you're presenting in. So you, if you're a finalist in the most transformative solution, you need to think about why is it the most transformative? What makes it transformative? So um, what, we, what we often find is that people will talk about how good it is, what's the problem, but they actually forget to link it back to their category. Um, and then if you also take up all the time and the judges can't actually ask that question, the judges in the judging will say, I don't actually know why it is transformative or I don't actually know why it is innovative. So leave time for questions and have a backup plan. So if, for instance, you want to play some videos and that happens sometimes and the video then doesn't want to play for some reason, have a backup plan. Um, think about uh, what you can do to, to make it, um, you know, some, I think I've seen in actual fact in one of the years uh, when we did do the face-to-face, for some reason, nothing wanted to work. Someone's computer didn't refuse to work. And what they ended up doing is they stood up, they took us through the presentation, they had a paper copy. And uh, what had happened is, um, you know, the judges shared the paper copy um, and in sharing the paper copy, those entry actually did really well uh, because people spoke from the heart, they knew what they were talking about, they had prepared well. So. A lot of key sits in the presentation um, and your preparation. So I just played around this morning. Um, and I've, so if you have a look is, and this is just thanks to Canva. This is, you know, Canva has got lots of templates. Uh, you can go and play around in that. And if you haven't, if you don't know uh, Canva, I would suggest that you, you know, you have a look in it, C-A-N-V-A. Um, and you may have, you know, uh, a lot of you may have the ability to have branded versions, but uh, not everybody has branded versions or the luxury of it. But really think about your title. So, you know, think about what makes that title different. How will the judges remember it? Um, I often refer things to, it's almost like going to a good restaurant. Um, I think if you pick an entree and it's interesting and you go, hmm, this is good. I'm looking forward to what's in the it's what's in the rest, and in the end, what actually is the dessert? So why do you deserve to win? Is the things that people remember. So think about it. So think about it as those stages. So do your introduction. Set the scene. So make the judges understand. And sometimes actually setting the scene is also take them through the troubles that you went through. 
Um, in a lot of, you know, in a lot of presentations, people talk about the solution and the, and the problem, and it's like as if it was easy. But um, as many of us know in business, it's never easy. So talk about it. Talk about why you actually started this so that it's not just about the problem. Sit the scene. Think of, think of it as the movie, um, as the blockbuster. State your problem. State your problem very clearly. And as you can see, for instance, I've used just the breadcrumbs. It's not the best of uh, breadcrumbs, but you know, I'm taking them through. I'm showing them this is the problem. And then who was this a problem for? Um, be specific around it. What is the solution? Talk about the team. So, you know, how did you come around um, in terms of working out um, you know, what the solution was? So also just make sure, for instance, in uh, the research and innovation um, uh, category or the startup category, there are different um, criteria or there are additional criteria. So this is just a generic um, presentation. It's not meant to be something that, you know, we're expecting to see uh, 50 copies of. Um, you need to make it your own, but it's just to give you some indications. Then how did you match that problem and that solution? What is the size of the market? What is your market share? What are, you, what are your competitors doing? So it's really, and for, for a lot of people who say they don't have competitors, think about if you don't have competitors, um, what does it actually mean? Sometimes, for instance, in the government uh, category, it's, it's, a, it's not a market it's not the same as when you're out in the open market, you, you're dealing with uh, different challenges, but you still have issues, you still have um, users, you still have, you know, for instance, in the mental health space, uh, there are so many, so many people who suffer from mental health issues. And, and, you know, in terms of this solution, this is the number of people that you're trying to look at. So, Explain that context in terms of, of what it is. Bring people in. Do not forget to talk about the technology that you've used. Um, explain that. Um, and also, uh, why is this innovative? So what kind of innovation are we talking about? Um, and um, talk about the future roadmap. Talk about where, are, um, my apologies, I have a barking uh, dog. I have a, you know, what is the future roadmap in terms of the project? And then don't forget, why do you deserve to win? You need to. And so for me, basically, the why do you deserve to win comes back to reminding the judges about the problem um, and how the, and the solution, how you manage to match it, how you manage to um, be innovative. So bring it back, tie it all together. Um, and also don't forget to also come and say, this is why, say, for instance, if you're in the transformative solutions category, this is why this is um, the most trans transformative. It is a competition after all. Uh, you know, we are looking to appoint a winner. Um, we are hoping to appoint a merit award winner. So typically for merit awards, um, you need to be within 5% of the, uh, the winner. So, but if we can have a winner and a merit award winner, um, we can send more people to, um, to the I Awards, which is good for uh, West Australia. Then allow the time for the questions and answers. It, it, in that stage, if you have a presentation that can run through with some, um, you know, with some slideshows in terms of quotes, uh, in terms of, of, you know, more videos of your product, um, use that opportunity because it will run in the background. Um, and then there's obviously the thank you and, and, and leaving the room. So in terms of that process, I just pulled these things together. So they gave you an idea as to what we are looking at. Remember to have a structure because uh, I, there's about 13 slides there if you ignore the questions and answers and the thank you one. Um, and you have 15 minutes. So if you think about it, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to be clear about what you're talking about. You need to have some good structure. Um, so it's really important that you, that you think about it, that you do it, you almost put it aside, come back to it um, and, and, and take it like a movie or take it like a really good dinner and where you go and say, this is, this is the point that I want to make. So 
for more information, feel free to email me, feel free to email uh, the generic email, the events email uh, that you've been getting some email from. If you get stuck, um, I've given you my mobile number and I've given you Petra's number. Um, so now we can, um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to throw them out at me now. Um, so, Yes, I wanted to take you through. So I would like to say best of luck. Um, it's really, you know, as the, as the chief judge, because I'm the only one that gets to see all of the presentations just because of the structure that we have and I'm not doing the judging. Um, it's amazing to see the, the innovation and the excellence we have. And so it's exciting. I'm, I'm quite excited to, uh, to see all these amazing presentations come through. So if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask them now. Or if you don't want to ask them now, send them through, email me. Um, do they actually read the application or is it a clean slate? So the only time what they would go back in terms of going back. So uh, that is a good question. So in this process, when you've now become a finalist, the, the lead judges um, and the judges would have gone back and would have done some, um, they would have done uh, the referee checks. So typically what the, the lead judge will do in the deliberations or just before is he would say, um, he would say that um, the referee said this was good or the referee said, well, there were some issues. Um, so, but typically the only time that they would go back to your application and review your application would be um, if, there, if you, you spoke the whole time, they still had a question and they ran out of time to ask the question. Typically, the idea is not that they would go back to it. They do have it available because they actually score on, the, um, on award, um, award fours. So it is, it is a clean slate, you all start. So we're not going and saying, oh, well, this presentation got 70 and this one got 80. Um, and so this one we're expecting more. In actual fact, a lot of times, um, the, uh, a lot of the entries that did not necessarily do is, you know, 100% on the online version tend to do quite well because we all, it's, it's easier sometimes to talk about what we do than it is to, to write it um, in, uh, in the, the uh, award force, you know, the online version. So, um, so let me just have a look. So yes, the judges do, re they don't read the application. It is a clean slate. They only go back to that application. And so um, in a lot of instances, we actually have the same judging panel as we had before, but because we start with this clean slate, um, if, for instance, because of the logistics, uh, we have to move judges around, uh, we can also move the judges around. And so it is a clean slate. It's a, it's, it, that's the intent of it. Um, so there is uh, the list of the finalists that's been provided. Thank you in the, in the, um, in the questions or the chat box. So the question uh, is, I understand scoring resets but do the judges have an understanding or do we need to go back over everything that we submitted? So basically in your presentation, uh, you have to take it from the perspective of this is the problem, this is the solution. So depending on what the criteria is, but let's go through um, innovating government. So this is the problem, this is the solution. How does it match the solution? What technology did you use? So if you go back to that deck that I gave you, if that's kind of the criteria that you need, you will take people through it. But then also think about the example. So if you go and say, this is the problem, um, then you have to go and say, well, in this pool of people, this is where the problem is. Um, so it is a reset. You do have to you do have to take them through why your innovation is the best. Um, it's, a, it's a different process but they can go back. So if, for instance, you have, um, uh, if you have more information now or something has changed from when you did the online, it's good to do that as well. And so because the judges aren't always the same, uh, it's also good to make sure that you cover those points. 
Um, so Rina, Professor Rina Tiwari asks, can two people of the team present together? You can absolutely present with as many people as you want. So you can also work, uh, you work, you can work in a different style. You can work, you don't have to do a PowerPoint presentation. A PowerPoint presentation typically works well. Some people uh, use videos in the process. Some people use more, um, more than one presenter. Uh, the students, for instance, where it's a, a group of students, typically they make they take turns uh, to to present. So yes, um, if it's a team presentation, why not share the load? Um, it certainly helps, and it helps to um, to remember more things. So any more questions? So Danny, did I answer your question? So with respect to the criteria. So, um, so with respect to the criteria, so uh, Ben's asked, I feel like I must have missed this, but with the regard to the criteria, is this just the criteria in the download info guide? Yes. So it is those criteria. So you'll see that is what the judges would typically look at. So we provide the judges with, uh, because I do the scoring sheet, I typically also provide them, uh, when I provide them with a score sheet, I also provide them with a, a, a bullet point overview of the items that we need to look at. So for instance, the privacy and security, a lot of people did not really touch on how you manage privacy and security. Um, they will have that as one of their bullet points in, um, in how you match the, the problem and the solution. So, um, uh, so that is in terms of it. So you can, you should be able to access um, your previous entry so that you can go and see what it is. But um, yes, that is the download guide, uh, load guide is uh, what you should be looking at. So in terms of just to, so Gemma has also asked, just to clarify, do the judges give a score one to 10 against each of the five criteria for the category? And is this used to calculate your overall score? And is each criteria weighted equ um, equally? So it depends. It depends on each of the categories, how the weighting criteria has been set up. So the weighting still applies as it applied in the first, um, uh, in the first round. But what the judges do is they score out of 10 and then award force um, scores, um, they put the score out of 10 and then the, the weighting goes in um, and it will be, if it's say 30, it will actually uh, turn um, calculate it to be out of 30. So it will make the 10 to be uh, three times 10. So for the judges, they just need to think about scoring out of one to 10. Um, then with the lead judges, what we run um, as a separate um, exercise, and that becomes actually quite important when there are very, very close scores. And it's um, and believe me, when we do some of these um, the deliberations at the end, it's really, really hard because uh, when when the scores are um, so close, we have to go by the we have to use an Olympic scoring um, set to actually determine. Um, who the winners are or who the merit um, awards are. So, um, so in terms of the, in terms of the Olympic scoring, we don't we we use that and the lead judge runs that on the side. We keep those scores and we can then work out. It, it's really then the, just the differentiator, but it also kind of helps to make sure if we have we I call them outliers. If there are people that are really strict and people that are really generous. We also use it to make sure that we have a, um, a fair process in terms of how we do the judging. So um, the, the weighting applies, but for the judges, they score out of 10 and the weighting happens um, in, in the back of um, award force. So if you are a finalist in two categories, you will have two interviews. Um, yes, that is correct. Um, are there different judges for each category? Uh, if they are the same judges, they'll be seeing much of the same material in the presentation. So in actual fact, we have for most of the entry uh, categories, we have different judges. Um, and remember, each category is also a different category. So you may use some of the same information. But for instance, if you are in startup, startup has got different uh, uh, category or a criteria to 
say, transformative solutions. So for finalists who are in more than one um, uh, category, is you need to make sure that you actually answer the criteria that are set for that category. So if the two categories are fairly similar, so say, for instance, in terms of the actual criteria, um, say social impact and transformative solutions, you then really have to focus on those differentiators. So you really have to focus on why is it this a social impact uh, entry um, or why is it a transformative solutions entry? Um, and again, think about um, at the end when we talk about, you know, why is it innovative? Why do you deserve to win? It is really why do you deserve to win this category? Um, so most likely, if, if the judges were the same, we would actually try and um, combine them. We have tried to do that in the past. But remember, we've got, we've got so many judges and we've got so many entries, it's actually quite hard to be able to do it. So, um, Lido, does that answer your question as well? Gemma, have I answered your question as well? Um, I think I have got, just check. Okay, so um, any more questions? Any more questions before we finish? Uh, the slideshow is, is, uh, is finished. So any more questions? Um, just see if I go back that way. Um, so for you, you don't have to, it's the, the waiting for the criteria doesn't matter um, in the sense of it's a criteria that we use as a differentiator. So typically for instance, startup, the category, the, the criteria weights weighs the same. Uh, the focus, same with the judges, is actually it's, um, it focuses on the scoring out of 10. So Gemma asked, the guidelines don't show any one of the criteria is weighted differently from the others. Uh, can you tell me where it's noted? So typically it is, you have to focus on the scoring out of 10. Um, and as I've said, let me just go back, let me just show you that. Uh, so this is the score set, and this is what the judges see as well. Uh, so exceed the criteria, meet the criteria, um, you know, so that, that's really what you need to look at. Uh, look at the, t at the scoring out of 10 um, and then because it all works out. So uh, some things we have to keep for ourselves as well. So any more questions? Just a thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, David. Uh, so um, yes, um, I'm really excited. It, to me, it's uh, um, we always tell the judges that uh, they cannot say things are cool or amazing or exciting. Um, I, because I don't judge, um, am allowed to say that. So I am really excited to, to see the presentations, to see what, um, uh, what you guys are able to deliver bring on your best um, and give it your best go. So it's a really great opportunity to check to check um, that your message gets through and your message is well understood. Um, and as I said, if, if I leave you with something is prepare your presentation so you can do your presentation in the 15 minutes. Um, and then once that 15 minutes is up, you allow those judges to ask you the questions. So um, because it really makes a difference in a lot of people um, in just the way how they understand their own product. Um, so yes, I, um, I'm going to wrap that up. I hope that it goes well and uh, we look forward to seeing you. If you haven't booked or you haven't got your link, please let us know um, because we would like to get those uh, booked in. So there are still a few people who haven't done it. Please make sure that you do that. Um, I'm going to wish you all a uh, happy evening and um, look forward to seeing you uh, seeing you shortly. All the best, everyone. That's very competitive, very good. <laughs>